Welcome to the Good News Express International, an inspirational program designed to explore how the good news of the gospel changed ordinary lives into extraordinary believers. Join prophetic teacher Bonnie Jones as she gathers testimonies of believers from around the globe. From the unknown to the well-known, from the hidden to the forefront, and everywhere in between, express the impact of the good news of Jesus. And now, here is your host, Bonnie Jones. Welcome to the Good News Express, where everyone's testimony is important because the work that the Lord has done through you, the world needs to hear because no two people's testimony is the same. We may be similar, but not exactly the same. So today we have Christopher Martin with us, and we want to hear what the Lord has done in his life. Um, there's so many things. Chris and I have known each other for a period of years, but I don't know all the nitty gritty details. So today you're going to get to share them with us as we hear the good news through Christopher. So why don't you start by telling us um, when you first came to know the Lord and uh, how the people around you, uh, maybe they introduced you to the Lord or Maybe you got saved in, in church or on the street or in the grocery store. Who knows? <laughs> What's your good news, Chris? What story have you got for us? Well, first off, thanks so much for having me, Bonnie and Lynn. And thank you for, for what you're doing. I think it's awesome. And I think it's a, a real need in the body of Christ to, to reveal uh, so many different testimonies to encourage people. I think uh, during these days, we definitely need the encouragement. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I actually was uh, saved. My dad became a Christian first. I was um, originally when I was young, a, a Catholic, you know, I did all the all the good stuff. And I was a little uh, altar boy and have pictures of me falling asleep, uh, uh, you know, doing that job. And, <laughs> and uh, I actually, before that, uh, after that, I became a Mormon. And um, really? I was really, yeah, I was really good in the Mormon <laughs> shirts i had memorized i had the whole sleeve of badges of of all the stuff yeah uh so it's been quite a quite a journey uh and uh when i was about 14 my dad became a christian several years before me and and he obviously ministered and shared with all of us um and uh so i was about 14 when i became a christian i, may, I would say maybe a little younger actually um maybe maybe 12 13 something in that range um got involved with the church he he's been a pastor uh, finance minister for uh, Cassis Adobe uh, was Baptist Church back then uh, in Tucson, Arizona, for for years, and uh, so he's had an interesting journey, and you know uh, shared the good news with me, and and I became a Christian, and um, it, it was around I was around fourteen when I went to a church um, uh, meeting, you know, camp meeting or something that the Lord had called me into into ministry, um, and I come home and I talked to my parents about it and everything. So yeah, that's, that's when this, uh, this whole journey started, but, uh, you can see from very young, it was, uh, you know, the, the Lord was, was working on my heart all the way through all that time. Right. Now you said like at 14, did you, did you hear the voice of God? Was it the inner, you know, the still small voice? You said he called yeah. you into ministry. Like, how did that, how did you Yeah. It's interesting. It was, it was, it was like you said, that, that, that small voice that, you know, I want you to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the interesting part is, is now I had no idea what that request was <laughs> at 14, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. and, and for years I was trying to, to meet that request in the way that I understood it. Right. Um, only to find out now it's, it's very different than what I anticipated. <laughs> yeah. 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 He cons us, I think. <laughs> yeah, he does. I, I, I joke with my son. I said, Hey, if the Lord asks you to go into ministry, say I, I'd prefer door number two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. So, uh, so you knew at a young age that you were called into ministry. Then how did that begin? And what did yeah, you walk so, in since that time? Oh, my walk's been, uh, I would say for the most part, uh, I was very dedicated to the Lord, uh, very de 
you know, focused, I, I would study, I'd, I'd memorize, uh, you know, I'd done so many Christian things with the church, you know, back then the, the church was, was, you were really, as, as a youth, you were really involved in the church and, and really doing stuff in the youth groups and stuff. And I'm not sure if they're doing it quite as much as they did back then, but it was, that was the highlight of your life. You know, you went to all that stuff. So I got really good at memorizing and, and studying. And, and so for a long time, uh, I had a really good relationship with the Lord and, and honestly, I've always had a good relationship with the Lord, but there came a point in my life. Um, and this was after, you know, years later after I'd gotten married and, you know, when I, uh, talked to my wife, when we were first getting married, I told her, I'm listen, I'm going to go in the ministry. That's my call. And she was fine with it. But in, in our minds, ministry meant like a pastor of a church, right? right? That was the uh -huh. idea. And so for years, uh, I, I tried to go to seminary. I tried to go to, to ministry school, Bible, whatever I could. And, uh, nothing panned out. Couldn't even really work for my dad's church, you know, and it was a big church, but just nothing ever worked out. So, um, uh, several years ago, it was around 2007 or so. I, I mean, I was, I was done honestly with ministry. I really was, I was done with the, uh, I was done. I, I say with the Lord, but not, not with my relationship with him, but I mm. just, I was at the end. I, I remember sitting in the pool and I told my wife, you know, I'm just sitting there by my standing by myself. And I said, you know, forget it. I mean, there's just nothing here for me. I've tried and tried and tried and there's nothing here. So that was all your fleshly efforts. It was everything. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was my fleshly yeah. efforts. And, so and it was your will, but not necessarily. I mean, you were trying to do his will, but in your way. In, in my way and my timing, I, I, yeah. because where I am now and where I saw it, we're, it is, we're not even on the same hemisphere. Like I had no <laughs> idea what you're talking about, you know, what, you know, yeah, the, yeah. Per, the prophetic and, and all this stuff. I didn't even know about that stuff back then or itinerant ministry. I didn't, what are you talking about? So, yeah. yeah so uh, looking back now, I go, Oh, oh so I, you okay. were saved at that point, but you were, you were, were you not spirit filled then? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say I was spirit filled um, as I am now. Um, right. you know, it's, it's funny. People say, you know, what, what, what are you? And I, you know, there's, you know, all these other things. I actually kind of coined the phrase baptomatic and you say like, <laughs> what in the world is that? Right. You know, and it's, it's the, it, it, where I am is, is a, is a foundation of the word of God. I, that's critical. And, and the understanding of salvation and the importance of that, but the, the charismatic side is the understanding of, of healing signs, wonders, and the Holy, the Holy ghost, you know, really connecting with them. So, so I kind of, amalgamate these two together that I think is like kind of where I am, at least in, in my, my process. Uh, Bob used to say he was Baptocostal. See, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So right yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. That's cute. So, okay. So you're sitting in the, in the tub or in a pool. pool. Yeah. Yep. Pool. Okay. I'm thinking hot tub, a pool. <laughs> this was like 2007 and you're just discouraged. Like I'm, I'm just done. So what happened then? Oh, so my dad had gone on uh, a trip with uh, Gary and Kathy Oates. They were doing these trips to Colombia, the country mm -hmm. like Bogota, Colombia. And so my dad, knowing where I am, and, and he's he's been such a supporter. My parents have supported me for so long, and, and my wife, and it's incredible. Um, but he said, he came back and said, oh, my gosh, there is just miracles and things we're seeing on these trips. It's incredible. You need to go. I will pay for everything. And you know, Bonnie, these trips are expensive. He said, I'll pay yeah. for everything. All you have to do is get your passport. And Bonnie, I'll tell you, I said, I don't want to go. <laughs> and he said, I'll pay for everything. I said, all right, I'll go. But I didn't <laughs> want to go, Bonnie. It cost me, yeah, it cost me $180 for a passport. My yeah. dad was covering everything else, thousands of dollars, and I didn't really want to do it, but I did it. And uh, so it was in 2008 that we went to uh, Bogota, Colombia. Yeah. And that's, that's where my journey really took off. Yeah. So tell me what happened on that trip. Yeah. So obviously, you know, my state of mind. Um, and so I went on this trip and there was a, there was a demand on God. Here's the deal. Uh, I better see somebody who's clearly blind or has no legs or something. I'm, I'm not going to listen to, you know, Oh, I, my heart got healed or this now. Nope, no, I better see something amazing. Knock my socks off to know that this thing is real for me. Otherwise I'm done. I'm done. And, and Bonnie, I'll be honest. There were a couple of times I, I thought, you know, we talk about, Oh, it's suicide and that sort of thing. Now, would I have ever done it? No, but you kind of get there sometimes in your mind. You think, spiritual that, what else suicide. is this? Yeah, it's, it yeah. is spiritual suicide. You're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get so hopeless 
honestly. Right. And, and that's how I, I went to this meeting. And so there were several days in. And so there, the first day, uh, my dad's praying over somebody who's blind. And, and so I'm, I'm watching like a hawk. All right, this is it. You know, remember <laughs> I've got my stipulations with God, so he better pull yeah. through on this. And, uh, well, nothing really happened. And so this went on for, for several days. And so, um, of course I'm getting more discouraged. And then one meeting, you know, um, I have a really bad, uh, right knee. I have two screws in my knee, no cartilage or anything. And so, uh, Gary Oates was praying for, for healing and, and for knees. And, and so I really felt like my knee got warm. I really felt like I got healed. And I thought, wow, you know, here's something really significant that I can hold on to. And well, couple of days later, uh, it was back to being sore and I was so I'm back to myself, like, okay, this is it. So needless to say my poor dad and I'm rooming with him, you know, my yeah. poor dad, he's thinking, Oh, this is not going well. So he's, he brought me on this trip to encourage me to get me going again. And, and, and before I went on this trip, uh, we had prayed and, and we had had a, a great meeting and, and a friend of mine, um, had called uh, a, a ministry friend and, and he had told my dad that, you know, he really saw this as a launching for me, like mm -hmm. a rocket taking off. But I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. So, Bonnie, at this point, everything, everybody tells me, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> right. So, so one night, um, they're splitting people up to go minister. And since my dad had been a pastor, you know, Gary said, do you want to go to this other church and minister? And my dad said, sure. And so Gary's going to these places and I was going to go with my dad and my dad talked me out of it and said, no, you go with Gary, you know, you haven't been around him very much and, and it'll be a great time. So I said, okay. So we went our separate ways. Well, you know, it was a good meeting and it was, people were changed and that's great, but I wasn't changed the way I wanted to be. And so I'm in the hotel room waiting for my dad. Where's my dad? You know, it's 10 o'clock at night. Where is he at? Well, Bonnie, he comes running in this room screaming. And I thought, what has happened? I mean, he's just going ballistic. He says, I saw a miracle. It was a miracle. There was a boy's hand who was shriveled up completely. There was gold coming down and his hand, it had been like that for years. I mean, he's screaming. Now, Bonnie, normal people would say, that's wonderful. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's amazing. Not yeah. this guy. I was P.O. just to say <laughs> bluntly. So here's my poor dad experiencing this amazing miracle. And now I'm even more mad at him and God. <laughs> why? You say, why could you possibly bet? Because that was my miracle that God and, and my dad robbed me of. I should have been there. Uh -huh. I should have been able to see that. That was what I was looking for. Uh -huh. So now I'm, I'm hot. I am hot. Yeah. <laughs> my poor dad. And so my dad, after seeing this miracle, is apologizing to me. I am so sorry. Now, who apologizes after seeing a miracle of God? Well, my dad, when I'm yelling at him. Yeah, because so, you should have gone with him, right? I should have gone with him. That's yeah. That was what, what happened. And, and God knew it, too. So now I'm really mad at him. So do you think so God then, was just stirring up jealousy in you? You know, you know I, I know what he was doing. He was He was breaking me down to where there was nothing else for me. He was chipping away, chipping away and chipping away. And of course I, I didn't know it. I'm going through the process. You, you don't know it, but yeah, you know, he's just yes. chipping away. He's, he's taking away everything that I thought I needed. Right. And the next day uh, we go to this huge church. It's a powerful church and the, and the pastor and his wife are just on fire. I mean, they are. And, and so I'm, I'm at the end, Bonnie, I'm, this is it. And, uh, and, and we're driving along we're, you know, we're, we get there and we get to this church. I'm seeing all this stuff. And so they bring the entire team on, on stage. And so they line us up and the, and the pastor's wife, she's praying over people and Bonnie, they are dropping every one of our team members just do, do, do like this. So again, I have very clear stipulations with the Lord. We have a very clear understanding. This is how it's going to go. So <laughs> yes, you had right? your stipulation. Did I, he agree yeah, to yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh -huh. I'm sure he did exactly as you did laughed. Yeah, that's good, buddy. <laughs> so, so I said, Lord, I am not going to courtesy drop. And what's a courtesy drop? I'm not having somebody touch me and I go down. Oh yeah. No, listen, it better be the power of God knocking me stone cold out or I am not going down. And I'm braced when she's coming. So yeah. she is, pre she is <laughs> touching everybody. I am braced. I am like, Lord, this is your last chance to bring me into this ministry, to bring me into this call, to keep this relationship going. Cause I'm done. That's where I was. I mean, that's the truth. So the person next to me drops to the ground, Bonnie, she walks right up to me. I'm braced. I'm ready. Lord, here's your chance. She looks me in the eye and 
does not even pray for me. She goes on to the next person and they start falling like flies. And Bonnie, I got to tell you, that's it. We're done. We're done. Okay. okay. We are. Yeah. I, I'm watching everybody fall. Everybody um, over here fall. And I, she didn't even pray for me. I said, you have got to be kidding. Okay. That's it. <laughs> so the service is over. Now my dad is like, oh my gosh. Cause of course he was out, you know, yeah. but so he sees me. And so he comes up and so then he, he changes his, his, his tune a little bit and says, you know, if you weren't so blah, 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 or this and that, listen, now we're done. Now my dad's done. We're done. Our relationship with you is done. That's it. God, we're done. My dad, we're done. It's over. Yeah. So he's thinking, oh, this did not work. He brought me on this trip to connect me with God. It didn't work. I said, dad, you don't understand. I said, I'm done. I, I've, I've spent so many years trying and trying to, I'm done. I'm done with it all. So we get on the bus. I'm, I'm sitting next to the window. The bus is going and, and my dad just you know, says, can I sit next to you? I'm like, yeah, whatever. So he's, <laughs> you know, th that's just the truth that you can ask my dad. I mean, he'll tell you it was, it was rough. Nice. So he sits down next to me and he says, you know, I said, dad, you don't understand. And the, and the, I remember clearly the bus is going, the palm trees are going by me. I said, it's, I've spent my whole life wanting to, to fulfill the plan and purpose God had for me. And I, I, my life is just empty. I have everything and my life is just empty. And, and he said, you know, he said, well, you know, it took me two years. What he tells me it took me two years just so I could hear God this much. And I said, dad, I said, if that's the case, I don't want anything to do with God because I would never do that to my kids. I would never make them work and work and work just so I could hear him this much. So now my dad thinks, boy, this is just really blown it, right? This is not working. Yeah. So then he looks at me and, and this, this was the phrase. He said, maybe you have to be broken before you can be restored. Mm -hmm. And it was those words, Bonnie, where the Lord did something that radically changed my life. It was at that moment I said to him, what did you say? And he said, maybe you have to be broken before you can be restored. And that was exactly mm -hmm. what God had been doing over all these years, this breaking process, yeah. breaking process. And it, it mm -hmm. radically changed my life from that moment. And I, I, I told my dad, those two years you spent were not two years so you could hear God this much. They were enough so that you would understand to get out of the way and let him minister to me through you. And that's the change. It was, it was this radical encounter with the Lord that touched my heart yeah. in a way I could not have anticipated. Right. Yeah. That's powerful. That's powerful. So you would say um, that in that brokenness, so the Lord was able to reach you after, after you were really broken. Then you began to hear the Lord. Did you begin to move into uh, your ministry at that point then? How did that, what happened after yeah. that? Yeah, so it was this, it was this process actually. Uh, it, it, while on that trip, the Lord said, I want you to move to Moravian Falls, uh, North Carolina. And I said, what in the world? So, I mean, the, the, you know, I know we're limited on time. So the, the journey was crazy how it all happened, but it was just boom, 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 boom. I'll tell you one quick thing on that journey. When the Lord told me to move to Moravian Falls, I was working for a huge um, cable corporation at the time. I was a manager for them. And uh, I told them that I, I, the Lord's called me. I, I basically said, the Lord's called me to Moravian Falls. I've got to go. And uh, I put in my notice. And a couple of days later, you know, I gave them like a month and a half notice. A couple of days later, they brought me in and, and they said, we got to, we're going to let you go. And I said, you know, this is the whole reason I, didn't want to tell you guys early because I figured you would do this. And this is what they told me, Bonnie. This is a huge, you know, million dollar company, I'm probably more than that. And they said to me, you know, we really believe in what you're doing and we want to pay you to pack and prepare for your trip. So we're going to pay you for the next month and a half wow. so you can get ready to go. That's a God That's, thing. My goodness. That is crazy. Wow. That's just awesome. crazy. Yeah. But, uh, but I moved to Moravian Falls. I, I get connected in an internship with uh, Gary and Kathy Oates when they had done that internship. And, and actually uh, what got me started into my ministry was one day I went to the gathering church when they were in the warehouse mm -hmm. and I saw somebody named Bobby Connor preaching. <laughs> and first yeah. time I'd ever seen him really hadn't heard of the prophetic or any of that stuff. And I saw him and my daughter was with me and I said, that's it. That's it. That's what I want. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm called to do. And my, I told my daughter, I said, that's it. And, um, yeah.
So it so. was that real heart to heart. I mean, I know Bobby real well. So, and it was that heart to heart, spirit to spirit, really, when you saw Bobby and you was able to relate spirit to spirit. So you knew that God had really called you to. Yeah, I can see that now. I, I didn't know. I just knew that was it. I just, there was something there that I said, this is unlike anything I've ever seen or, or heard. And I knew that was what I was supposed to do. And, and through the Lord, um, uh, amazingly, somehow I ended up while my, I was in Moravian Falls for four years. Uh, I was, I was across the street from Bobby, yeah. uh, for those four years, I, I had no idea, um, how that happened. The entire journey, Bonnie, you know, before I left for Moravian Falls, um, the entire journey, I, I, I told my wife, I said, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even have a testimony really um, up until this point. And then I'll tell you what, I've got one now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yours is amazing. And, and you know, I, I never knew that you were Catholic or Mormon. That's really interesting. So you got yeah, a it's pretty crazy. picture going on there. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, as I was reading over your, um, over your notes, um, I saw that what I, what I really felt for you is like, you have a, you've had a journey of hope and um, because you were in such a place of despair and hopelessness, you know, and you were really challenging God, you know, it's like you laid out lots of fleeces for him. Right. And it was a yes. challenge. It was like, you either do this or, you know, I'm quitting. I'm giving up on you forever, you know, and even with your dad, but I mean, you really challenged God. But he loves you so much, just always waiting, like, okay, all right. He he did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. You know, I'll I share a real quick story um, uh, with that hope. You're right. It, it's been a journey of hope, hope in, in the fulfillment of all that he's given me, all that he's put in my heart. You know, the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so you, right. you just really have to rely on the Lord and trust him. And when you when you look at that hope, you realize he is your hope. He's yeah. your everything. And, and, and my journey is also um, connected with the, the relationship, like you said, with him, that I just, I go to the Lord just plain and simple. I don't hold bar. I just, this is, this is what's going on, Lord. But you know, the <laughs> Lord had given me, you know, in my, in my article with you, um, the Lord had given me Isaiah 41, 10 as my life verse. And he'd right. given it three separate times, just amazing times. Um, he gave it to me. And, and uh, the last time he gave it to me, I, I was at a, at a ministry meeting with Bobby and we were doing all this stuff. And I said, Lord, I said, I know you've given me this, this verse three different times and I appreciate it. And it's awesome. But if I could have it one more time, unlike anything I've ever had it, and I, and I, you know, talk about my, my conversations with him. I said, I, I don't want somebody just coming up and saying, oh, here's your verse. I don't want a piece of paper. I want something totally unique. And lo and behold, uh, I'm taking Bobby. The conference is over. Nothing happened. And I even apologized. I said, oh, Lord, okay. You gave it to me three times. Thanks so much. You know, I appreciate it. Sorry for asking, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm, I'm supposed to take Bobby to the, to the pastor's house to finish up this, this conference and we're going to go home. And uh, my GPS gets lost about 15 minutes. We're driving around and I'm embarrassed. I said, oh, this is terrible, you know? And so it finally corrects itself. And I, and I get behind this car and we're going to turn left. And Bonnie, on the car, the bumper sticker read, Isaiah 41.10, fear not. Oh my God. And I went, oh my gosh it took me a minute to recognize the lord had answered my specific request specifically and perfectly in that way yeah. it was it was amazing so my relationship <laughs> with the lord is very I, I just i talk to him you know and, and yeah. interact with him yeah that that's it i mean that's part a big thing for you you said if you could wrap up your testimony you know sum it up in one word it's relationship and that's so vital i mean we we you know I can't count on you to have a relationship. You know, I, I need my relationship with the Lord. You know, That's you, right. Each one, I know when I was a good Baptist, <laughs> the, it was up to the preacher, you know, he's supposed to teach me and, you know, whatever. And that was his job. He went to school and learned, not me. I was just there to listen. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's all about relationship. It's our individual relationship with him. So, but you know what, uh, Christopher, could you, just um, release a word for those who are listening or watching and, and just a, a word of hope for those who are like in that place of despair or hopelessness, you know, that just to encourage them. I mean, I know your testimony does, but I think you have a, a word to release that will really uh, impact their hearts. Yeah, absolutely. I will. God, God is waiting 
waiting to, to relate with you, to talk with you, to, to, to share with you, to minister to you. That, that's what this whole thing is about. All that we're doing, the, the studying of the word of God is so that we can connect with him. That is what he wants to do with us. He wants to have a relationship that's first and foremost above all else. And it's from that relationship that you'll start to have the freedom to be able to move and operate in what God's given you to do. It isn't about the destiny. It isn't about what you do, what you accomplish. It's about relating to him and connecting with him. And if there's one thing I've experienced with the Lord over all these years and in my despair and my desperation, the, the very thing that I thought I needed, signs, wonders, miracles, any of that stuff, it wasn't those things. It was to know God loves me and he cares about me and he wants to be involved in my life. And that's the key here. That's, that's the message for anybody that's in a desperate state that wonders, does God love me? The answer is, oh, yes, he does. You know, the, the Amplified Classic says in John three sixteen, for the for God so dearly loved and highly prized the world. We need to really understand how much he loves you. And that's the message for the people is have that relationship first. Don't worry about the other stuff. Don't worry about the details. Have a relationship with him. Otherwise, what are we doing? What's the point of all this? Yeah, and, and you know, our relationships, he meets us where, where we are and speaks to us in the way that we understand. You know, I mean, I know you hear from the Lord. I do, you know, Bobby Connor, you know, all of us do. We can all hear the voice of God, but he speaks to us in the way that we can understand. Yes. So yes. That, that's and, he, and he wants to talk with us. Yeah. You know what? Like Bobby, he'll say, God says to him, hey, boy. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's never said that. Hey, <laughs> to me. Right. You know, but that's their relationship you know that's right so that's I mean, right and i think that's cute because i'm like really god says that but he does you know i mean it's how he relates to bobby i like that. that's right yeah so, and he, he he gives us that's it's the individuality that's who we are to him yeah we're we're although we're one body we're still separate people and absolutely. he wants to relate as you want to relate with him as you connect with him as you hear him and I, I think that's really a key going forward is so many times we we become like the israelites oh moses you go talk to god and yeah. come back and tell us what he says and that's why we have so many christians lacking faith lacking hope lacking trust because we don't have the relationship we're looking to somebody else to have that relationship for us and it will never work yeah true 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 you are right on uh, okay, Christopher, you your ministry is called Voice to the Nation. Yes, Voice plural, to the Nations. Plural yes, Nations. nations. Yep, yep, yes. Yeah. Okay, so if somebody wants to contact you, like for uh, just to learn more about your testimony, or maybe for speaking engagement or counseling or whatever, uh, where would they contact you at? Yeah, they can just use my email, which is Christopher at Voice to the Nations .org. ORG. Okay, very good. Now, I want to say also, you know, while you were speaking there, uh, I, I believe this is a word for you, but I believe for those who are watching, I saw a door of opportunity opening for you. Okay? Amen. And, and I feel that it's going to be a choice that you have to make. Do you walk through that open door? <laughs> Or do you stay on this side? Are you willing to cross the Jordan? Or do you want to stay over here, you know, where I've been eating off the manna for a long time? So, but I feel it's a door of opportunity opening for you. And like I said, it's not, I don't feel this is limited just to Christopher. I feel it's to whoever's watching and listening, but a door of opportunity. So, you know, but it's your choice. It's always our choice. Awesome. Do I yeah, stay or I, do I, I go? Do I stay or do I go? I, you know, and Bonnie, I, I thank you so much for that word. It's very powerful for me. But like you were saying for the for the people as well, that 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 door of opportunity, I can only get to that door having that relationship with him to know Absolutely. that he's going to come with me. You know, Moses said, hey, if you don't go with me, I'm not going. Um, you know, one quick note on relationship. I, I think of remember when when David sinned with the Lord uh, and, 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 and the Lord uh, punished him. 
something I read in there that was so significant to me about the relationship David had. Remember, David was a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, I'm going to give you three options. Oh, you pick your, your, your punishment. Wow. And, yeah. and I thought, wow, that's relationship. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's not just, I'm going to do it's what do you want? Here's your options. You've made yeah. a mistake. Here's your options. And I thought, man, that's so important. So yeah, that, that open door, it, I just encourage the body of Christ to, to, to draw near to God. And, and the Bible says he'll draw near to you. I, I can't think of anything greater, nor can I think of anything greater that we have these conversations that I actually tell the God of the universe. Here's what I need. I just think, <laughs> wow, you know, the God of the, who controls my very breath. I feel comfortable enough with him to have a conversation with him. I, yeah. I just, I, I think it's just uh, uh, astounding. You know what I do? Like, I'm going to say almost every night, sometimes I just fall right to sleep, but usually like I'm, I start a conversation with the Lord and I'll say, well, you know what? I mean, I always tell him like, I love him that. And then I start with, well, you know what? It's like a recap of the day. And I'm like, why do I do that? Because you already know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like I'm going to tell him something he doesn't already know, but I want to just give him my recap and like what I felt was going on or whatever. What was happening. I, yeah. I one quick story. I know I keep telling you, I'll let you go, but I, I was playing <laughs> racquetball with a friend of mine. And we were, we were playing, it was a great game. And my friend said, what's the score? And I said, oh, I don't remember. And the Lord said, oh, it's this. And I said, oh, it's this. And it was at that moment I realized, oh my gosh, you're <laughs> paying attention to my racquetball game just that I'm having fun. So, so the Lord, he is so good. Like you said, he wants that. He wants us to yeah. just be open and free. He wants us to be, to be quite honest. He wants you to cut the BS and just get to the point. Just be honest with him. Just be that's open true. with him. That's what I he like wants. That. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, Christopher, it's just been a joy to have you on the show. And um, I know that everyone who's listened to your testimony today will be blessed because, you know, there's so many that, you know, I think we've all at some point been where you were, you know, maybe not to the degree that you were, or maybe to a, a deeper degree, but, you know, we've all been there at some point, but there's hope at the end of the tunnel, right? <laughs> or hope yes. on that bus, you know, and brokenness a lot of times, that's the best place to be because there's only one place to go then. It's up. So. It is. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. And Bonnie, thank you so much. And, and Lynn, uh, for all the work that you've done and, and for the years you spent with, with Bob and the work you've done and, and the, the pressing through and all of it, it's so awesome. And I just really bless you guys and bless your ministry. And I just pray people would just support you and, and, and really pay attention to what you're saying. Cause it's really the word of the Lord. Great. Thank you so much, Christopher. And I just thank everyone who joined our program today. And uh, you know, it is the good news of the gospel. Jesus came out of the wilderness after 40 days and, and he began his ministry by preaching, repent and believe in the gospel, preach the good news. And the last thing after he, um, after the resurrection and he was with his disciples just before he ascended, he said to them, and this is for us too, we are called to be his disciples, go into all the earth and spread the good news. So that's what we want to reach people around the world. And um, everybody has a testimony to share. So if you would like to be a part of the Good News Express, we just ask you to uh, go to our website, click on to the uh, Good News Express and fill out the application. We want to hear your testimony because other people will be blessed just like you are blessed today by Christopher. So be blessed and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Chris. We hope that today's testimony has both glorified God and implanted the seed of a new perspective of His love for you. If you are wondering, how can I get my testimony on board the Good News Express, simply go to our website at didyoulearntolove.org and click on the link for the Good News Express. It will take you to the easy-to-fill-out application page. Once you're finished, click Submit.